Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be uh, sticking a mortise in this uh, corner post. Um, it'll accept this square uh, horizontal rail. If I get time at the end I'll uh, show you me putting up this post and assembling it. Um, at the moment I've got to, got to put a hole in here that's 100 mil by 90 mil. This is just a bit of a, an offcut from a sawmill. You can see it's got a, one edge of it has still got the, the bark on it, or where the bark was. So it's not, not square all the way along, but it doesn't matter. It's heavy as buggery and uh, it's gonna take 100 years to rot. So um, it'll do just fine. I just need to uh, think about where that knot's gonna end up once it's in the ground because where I put this hole will determine uh, which way the post is going to face and there's another knot over here as well so I'll, I'll, put, uh, I'll put the post in the ground at that end and I'll, I'll cut my square up here I usually bury them about 600 mil and uh, that'll leave 1.5 sticking out of the ground the post is about 2.1 long so if I'll, I'll do a bit of a calculation and figure out where to put my square up here just I need to bring a texter go and get the tape measure about 600 there. Most of my posts stick out of the ground about 1.3. So 1.3 is going to be about there. And the, yeah, the top wire is often around here somewhere. So what I'll do now is uh, if I put my square about there and up. So if I stick it up that way, that'll leave ninety wide. I'll do wide across there and a hundred the other way. We'll go a hundred that way. Take out my line, that'll give it some clearance. This is actually on a boundary fence, so it doesn't really matter. No one's going to see it where it is, except for my neighbour. And I'm sure he's going to see me banging away over at the fence. And when I'm not looking, he'll go and check out how I went. So that's 100 that way and 90 that way. Hasn't got to be that accurate. I'll just cut down to my lines because this is not going to fall out. Now there's a quite a few different ways you can you can do these. Um, some of them more dangerous than others. What I'm going to do is uh, drill out around the edges around here and then uh, knock it out with a hammer and with a mallet and a chisel. Bring us in a bit closer.
need to get an electric drill for that. I did uh, one of these the other days with a 25mm spade bit and I think I destroyed my drill. So um, pulling that apart and seeing why will be the subject of another video I reckon, sitting on my bench at the moment. mosquitoes. I think these trees are actually iron bark so they're um, nice and hard. Hasn't been down that long this tree's been down uh, probably six months and they don't tend to dry out much when they're in log format so it's just, a, just as wet as it was shortly after they cut it down. They're all about the same depth. Now the boring part. Luckily, I've got one of those high speed chisels. both ends. And the edges. I've got the bevel towards the line, that way as I knock it in, it moves away. So that'll leave me something to clean it up with later. I'm going to make myself a nice wide chisel, I just haven't got around to it yet. And that's getting pretty close. Get some of the shit out the bottom there. wonder how I go trying to fit that great big piece in there. Let's have a look. Ah. 
that way. Or was it that way? I think it was that way. It's really close. I might just stick a plane on it and round the end off a little bit. I don't know what made you guys think I was going to use a hand plane. But I'm not. But I will get my earmuffs. A little more. Nolly. So that's in there. We'll call that done. I'll just uh, take a chamfer off the top corner as well. I might do all the sharp edges of the of the horizontal rail. That thing's not light. If a beam's going to rot when it's out in the weather 24 hours a day, it always rots from the edge first. So if you take all the corners off, it uh, makes the wood last a lot longer. Okie dokie, I think we'll call that done. You could do that with a chainsaw, but I had a planer in my hand already. All right, next we'll be uh, installing it. That'll be a couple of days. We'll uh, bring you back then. Here's a strainer post I put up a couple of weeks ago. Pretty similar. Uh, in construction to the one I uh, just made, the, the strainer post, but only after a couple of weeks have a go at this. See this little track here going up the outside, if I can see in the glare, if I knock them off, you see little termites running in and out of that, little bastards, they go up the outside here and across the bottom and they're eating my, eating my rail. They're all in there too. Little buggers. It's hard for me to see. And they've got clear on the back of the screen. 
but they're right through it. They're all in here and mucking about in there. So I'm going to have to paint this uh, with some sump oil. You can see they're tracking up and down my post over here as well. So I'll break their little little uh, party up and uh, paint my post with some sump oil and uh, hopefully that will stop them eating my post. Looks like they're just using their little tubes to climb up this post to get to the rail. Something they like about that old rail. Anyway, Maybe I'll give you another picture after I've painted it and it won't be that interesting. It's a couple of days later. Um, I didn't get a chance to film the installation of the strainer post here. But it all went pretty smooth. Um, pulled out the old uh, post with the jib crane on the back of the tractor. And normally a bit of a bugger to get out. It was all split and hollow. Uh, we'll just reuse the old gates. Uh, if you haven't seen how these work, um, they're pretty pretty simple. And when we strain the wire, heading back down towards the dam there, it'll tend to pull the post over. Um, if it doesn't pull it straight over, it'll gradually pull it over with time. So with the, the horizontal piece at the top there, it goes across to the first post. Um, as the wire uh, pulls that post down the hill, and that, that top bar will be in compression and that'll tend to push this post over as well. And uh, you can see a diagonal wire there that goes from the top down to the bottom, and that'll stop that post getting pushed over, and it can't move the post in the ground down there. So that little triangle, or big triangle, um, is the crux of it. When you put the center wire on, you just put a loop around, and I'll use a pair of pliers in the middle there, and crank that around and around and around, twisting the wire up until it comes tight. You can do that with a wire strainer, but I find it simpler just to do that. And uh, later on, if we find it's come loose, we can just give it a few more cranks and uh, it gets a bit tighter. We cut a little slot up here in the post to stop the wire sliding down. The same thing at the bottom down there. I've cut out a notch up here so the rail can't fall off and wired that on. And that's pretty much how they work. Once, uh, once I've got the strainer on, I can then tie these wires off there. And I find it easier if I make a join out here and uh, reattach the old wire. So there's uh, four joins there. And that way I get to tie these knots um, without the wire strainer in the way and uh, not mucking around trying to get that to come tight. It's much easier to strain the wire from the middle. Now I'm just hanging the gates. I've put a hinge on the bottom there. They're fairly straightforward. You can see that's just like a peg that goes onto the, uh, the bottom of the gate. And the weight of the gate is always down on that. So there's no real need to bolt it on, which is lucky because the bolt's not quite long enough. You can just see the thread, the start of the thread down there. And so I'd have to, um, I'd have to tunnel that out a bit so I could get a nut on there, which is what I'm gonna have to do at the top with this, with this hinge bolt all the way in. And this one will be in tension, so it'll tend to pull out all the time. Um, I'll need to put a nut on the back. So I'll need to cut a little channel out around the back here you can see where that is so I can get a nut on but uh, I'll do that and I'll, I'll show you when it's all assembled got to do the same thing over there this time I'll be hinging that gate over that side and I'll show you why later on anyway you guys talk amongst yourselves I'll just uh, finish putting this gate together and I'll get you back when the next one's coming up if you're wondering how I uh, dig a hole like that straight down, it's about oh, 300 mil diameter, 30 centimeters. If you want to know what that is in inches, just um, divide by 25.4. The tongs here, just a layer to, uh, a bit hard to show you one-handed, to grab the dirt, 
So you shove them down the hole, grab the dirt and pull it out. The dirt here is quite hard, it's clay, and it can be a slow process trying to break up the dirt with those things. So I just use a crowbar to loosen up the dirt, and then I pull it out with those. Next time I do a post tile, I'll give you a demo. Very handy. Those uh, round and round things that you twist, um, no good in clay. All right in softer soils, but no good in clay. And uh, you can use a post hole digger on the back of your tractor, but I don't have one of those, and I don't need to go to the gym. Following my handiwork the other day with the brush, termites didn't come back. That's uh, three or four days ago. You can still see their track there because the oil didn't stick to it. But uh, up underneath there, no termites, so I'm not quite sure how long that will last. Hopefully, a long time. I could make a nice little cutout in the new post here because that um, bolt or the hinge bolt there was a little bit too short so I could cut it in like that and therefore make the gate basically level I couldn't do that over here I had a go at it but uh, the back of the post is all buggered termites have got that one this post is only about 10 years old and the termites around this bit of the paddock are, are pretty good or pretty fierce so you can see it's too too close at the top and uh, having a hard time getting that one in any closer I had my stilsons on it to tighten it up but uh, working around barbed wire on the poles sort of taken it off this this run which is my neighbor's fence which isn't too bad then I would have had to restrain that subject to uh, neighbors specifications and uh, didn't really want to get into that don't know how many more years this post has got to go but, uh, they've eaten all the sapwood out which is usually the first to go that just about sums it up if I uh, open both gates at once I can go from a neighbors paddock and put cattle around the corner straight into the downhill paddock there or if I just open one gate they can go into the paddock up there previously both the gates were hinged on this post and you couldn't do that but uh, now with them hinged on the opposite posts I can and when I close both of them like that Chain to go around them both. I think we can call that complete. Certainly not perfect, but it's better than the rotten mess that was here before. I'd like to thank you for your attention. And having said that, I'll see you on the next one. Oh, can't really see you.